seniors here, uh, Kyle Young and CJ Walker. Those are uh, two guys that represent everything um, about this program that we want our guys to represent. Um, they are tremendous people, uh, terrific competitors, and um, have have really led this team in really a unique season. Uh, led it in a in a really special way. Um, you know, Kyle's going to be one of. I think he's going to be the twelfth player, either the eleventh or twelfth player, um, to qualify for uh, four NCAA tournaments. If you include last year's uh, tournament uh, in the history of the program, so he would, I believe, be the twelfth player to do that um, in the history of our program, which is a significant accomplishment for him. Um, his productions increased every year. Now working on his master's degree, um, C.J. Walker has been, uh, you know, really about winning his entire career. Uh, he as well, with two schools, will have played in uh, or qualified for every every NCAA tournament. Um, has led us in assists both years, top two and steals both years. Um, and uh, both guys have battled through some adversity with injuries in a really special way. So, um, you know, we're, we love those guys. And uh, uh, CJ will uh, move on and professionalize. As many of people know, he's got a young daughter, and we're fully supportive of that. Um, you know, Kyle uh, obviously will have the opportunity to, to return, uh, uh, but I think he'll, he'll make a decision after the season regarding professionalizing uh, or, or uh, returning here for that year that's provided due to COVID. So um, really appreciate them. Obviously, we, we've got some senior managers as well that are going to be uh, recognized uh, in what will be a really unique senior day. Okay, we'll start off with uh, Adam Jardy. Hey, Chris, and you talk about this being a unique senior day. What are logistically, what's it going to be like? I mean, I assume like moms probably can't walk out on the court with their kids. You probably can't give them flowers and um, maybe guys can still give speeches after the game. Like logistically, what is it going to look like tomorrow? Yeah, I think the plan right now is to keep it as consistent as possible, uh, as, as consistent as we can, Adam. As you mentioned, we've, you know, we've liked the idea um, – uh, that we started a couple years ago of having the seniors, you know, uh, win or lose, give a senior day speech to, you know, those fans that would like to stick around and listen. You know, in this case, it's just going to be families. I do think we'll continue to do that. Um, uh, we'll do that at least tomorrow. Um, and we'll continue to do that, but we'll certainly do it tomorrow. You're right. They're not going to be able to get hugs or we're not going to be able to give corsages to the, to the moms and, um, you know, flowers and, and we're not going to be just not going to be able to do that, unfortunately, but uh, uh, hopefully, um, you know, we'll be able to do that in the future, but for, for it'll be, it'll remain as much as the same as possible. You know, we obviously got a terrific team that we're playing uh, another top five team here in this last week and a half of the season. Uh, so, um, you know, our focus before the game will be on, um, you know, trying to stay ready for that. <clears throat> what in, in this last week here, what, what has been the, the primary challenge in practice? What, what have you been trying with, with a little bit of time to work with guys in between games? What has this last week been like? You know, we've just tried to um, uh, give them some rest give because we've needed that. Uh, tried, tried to get some guys a little more rest without, you know, getting rusty or, or um, you know, taking a step back in, in any way. So I think that's, that's been the challenge. Obviously we, we've needed to improve in, in some areas. We need to play better in some areas. So we've tried to focus on that. Um, uh, but we just tried to focus on us as much as part, as much as possible. And part of that is, you know, you're somewhat limited right now with the number of guys that, that can't consistently practice, but um, uh, that's part of this week here. This has been the only bye week we've had. And it's unique that it falls in the last week of the season. But um, uh, it's good to have a couple of guys that can take some time off. Okay, we'll go with uh, Brendan Gulick. 
Hey, Chris, uh, why don't we start maybe on the Illinois side? I'm, I'm just curious what you've seen from them lately as you've. Uh... You know, uh, really deep, uh, talented, physical, really tough, play exceptionally hard. You know, we, we knew coming into the season uh, that they were going to be a team that that has has a I mean, they're a legit national title contender. And I think everybody kind of anticipated that in the season with with Io and Kofi returning and then really good players around them. So um, guys have really stepped up in, in Io's uh, absence, uh, but um, uh, big physical, um, play really hard, a well-coached team. At the beginning of the season, and I'm, I'm not going to live here for you, I know it's a superstitious thing, but at the beginning of the season, you, know, you, you had mentioned to us that um, you would be surprised if the entire 26 game schedule got played just given the, the, the daunting challenge in front of you. Um, so you can make a comment here on, on how it's been a successful season, not just in the fact that you've already won 18 games and, and you've you know, obviously been one of the best teams in the country, but the fact that your team has stayed healthy and followed certain protocols and um, you've played a full schedule. Yeah, no, no question, Brendan. And I, I think that has been um, – that's definitely a part of, of a successful season. And I, and I did not think we would be playing, what is it, 25 out of 26. Um, I, I didn't – I thought we would have more interruptions. And, and let's hope, hope and pray that we don't have interruptions heading into this uh, closing stretch. But, I, you know, Brendan, it has been a, a really um, – a credit to our guys. And I, I think I forget sometimes we're talking about as a staff – that it is, you know, for for every college player, um, it it can be a challenge because of again the isolation because the things that they enjoy doing in college, um, they have not been able to necessarily do or see their family. So, I just think our our group deserves uh, a lot of credit for that. As as do you know any team right now that's that's went through a season that's that's had very few, if any, interruptions. Some of that is probably good fortune, a little bit of luck, but there's also an element of, you know, guys really, um, you know, taking care of business. Okay, Patrick Murphy. Chris, I don't want to single one guy out that you, you've had play for you or anything, but Kyle was a guy who was committed to you at Butler, made the move here after you guys, your staff did, um, and, and obviously has accomplished a lot as a player. Um, just what has he meant for you, getting to know him as a high school player and, and through everything he's gone through? Well, he's meant, he's meant so much for, for our program. I, I can't overstate um, how meaningful um, his, he as a person and as, as a player, um, what he's meant to our program. And, you know, I, I, hope, his, I hope his time's not, not, not finished, but I'll support him either way. Um, um, I will definitely support him either way. Um, he just has been a phenomenal competitor. He's dealt with some really challenging things with some injuries that I think we've managed a little bit better this year outside of, you know, his concussion uh, that was obviously outside of our control. But, but um, he just is one of those guys that, um, you know, everything you think about and you talk about it in, in terms of, you know, playing for the team on the front of your jersey and and really embracing this opportunity to play at Ohio State, it really matters to him. And uh, it just does. And uh, I think that has been uh, evident for anybody who's watched him in these four years. And he's gotten better every year. You know, he's a better player now than he was last year. And I think that's that's a really good thing. And I, I do think this, his competitiveness, his energy, his athleticism, his motor, this team misses that when he's out more than any team I've been on, um, more than any team I've coached. It's, it's, it's apparent. We just, we didn't, you know, we were rolling last year. Some, and part of it, you know, when he was out, we didn't miss it as much. I just think we had other guys that provided some of what he provided. This team doesn't have that as much. And we do miss it when he's not his normal self. And slightly different topic, but the guys yesterday talked about the chance to play in front of a bigger crowd when they get to the Big Ten tournament. And I know you still have a game to play before you think about that, but 
just having more people in a gym uh, when you guys do go to Indy, I mean, what, what kind of difference can that make for, for any game, but specifically you guys? Uh, you know, I, it's going to be different. Yeah, it'll be different not having done it the whole year. You've, I've watched some games uh, from, you know, the SEC or the Big 12 where you see some of that with fans, and it, it does bring a different energy. I don't know necessarily, Patrick, what, what it means one way or the other. Um, it could favor some of those teams that are real um, locally, um, uh, you know, kind of locally – uh, there in, in or in around Indy, but uh, I, it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing for college basketball. Okay, we'll go with Tim Hall. Hey, Chris, you know, I know a lot of what you were trying to decipher through the last few games is how much of it was the difficulty of the schedule, maybe some things that you need to clean up. Just knowing that you have one more here against Illinois and they're, they're just, they're on another planet right now with how they've been playing. What, what, what goes through your head when, when you're going into a game like this? I think you're trying to balance, Tim, you know, what areas that you need to do better, not making excuses for uh, areas that you've not played or performed well in, and yet also recognizing the, uh, the stretch years, unlike anything I've ever been a part of. I've not been part of anything even close uh, to a closing stretch like this. Um, so I think you're trying to own – areas that I have to coach better and, and we've got to play better. Um, and, and also under, you know, trying to have some perspective as well, but uh, you know, unbalanced schedules are a part of this 20 game schedule. So you end up playing some teams um, more than others. And, and it just so happens that, that the top of our league with the exception of one thing, we, we play twice. And it just so happens that the calendar, where the calendar fell, it came here at the end. Hopefully, we're tough enough to, to manage it, identify some areas where we're getting exposed, be better, and prepare us here without it, you know, kicking us in the teeth too much. I'm also just wondering real quick, when, with the tournaments coming up, after this game, every single game you can play is going to be in the state of Indiana. And with that place just being a big part of your journey, being a college player and with Butler, just have you had time to think about just how wild, how unique this is going to be, knowing that we will have these tournaments, which is great? Yeah, I love the fact that it's there. I, I love the fact that it's in one location. Um, obviously, I, 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 I really uh, enjoyed my time there and, and love that city, but uh, I'm an Ohio boy now. I love it here and, and, uh, and love, love being here. And um, it'll be nice to kind of be there. Who knows where we'll play, right, Tim? I don't know if it's going to be what, what venue it's going to be, but, uh, um, but um, it's good that it's in one place and a place that uh, I think like, like this state, you know, appreciates good basketball. And obviously that's a state that does that. Okay, Bruce, Huey. Chris, it's been a while since you played them. So I wonder how much, um, you know, when you beat a team, how much do you expect them to take away what you did the first time that worked or because it worked, are you hesitant to go away from it? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a adjustments after, you know, after you, you won it at their place. Um, how much do you adjust given the fact that uh, there was some success in some areas? It's a, it's, a, it's a good question and one that I think you always as coaches try to figure out how much do you tweak and change knowing they're going to make adjustments uh, based on how we played them. There's always an element of surprise the first time you play a team. And then it comes down to uh, the adjustments they make and, and uh, who plays better on that given night. And I think for us, uh, we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we've obviously talked about uh, making some adjustments. Uh, you know, we didn't defend them um, uh, great. Uh, it also wasn't one of our worst defensive performances. It was a high scoring game. Um, I, I think we can't expect for us to shoot it at that clip uh, that we did and, and win the game. So I think we, we, we are going to have to be better than what we were defensively. Um, and some of that hopefully includes some adjustments. That first game came kind of amid uh, a good period of time for Justin. 
uh, lately. I think teams appears have made more of a concerted effort to stay closer to him and take him away, which it seems like that is um, possible for a team to do if they're super committed to it. And then you have to make the decision as to whether the attention he occupies is worth having him out there, maybe with him not scoring, but helping other people score because he does occupy somebody. What, what can you do to help him kind of bridge that gap between being just a decoy and being somebody who contributes? Yeah. You know, we're, and we've looked at some things. We have to look at some things where we can, we can try to free him up, get bodies off him a little bit. Um, he's got to hunt um, uh, shots in transition a little bit more. Um, the, the good ones that are there. Um, and uh, so I think it's a combination of things, but uh, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, when you're playing teams a second or, or third time um, or you've, you've built a reputation you know, it's a combination of things. Uh, I, I do think there are times where, as I've said, uh, he he's just going to have to be okay with, and, and he is, with the fact that, you know, he's, he's basically in some ways creating a four-on-four -four opportunity in the half court at times. Um, and uh, I think that's a, real be that's a real credit to him. But we've got to look at some things, ways in which we can help him too. Thank you. Okay, Spencer Holbrook. Chris, you've kind of built an entire culture on taking things one game at a time and just worrying about what, what's directly in front of you. But how do you balance that aspect of, of what you preach every day with the fact that this game carries a little bit of extra weight with when it comes to Big Ten tournament seating and potential NCAA tournament seedings? Is there a level of balance that you have to strike with the guys? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think you're always trying to strike that balance. And I'm not sure that I did as good a job here in the last, you know, uh, you know maybe a couple weeks. Um, you know, you want to emphasize games, the importance of games, the importance of all that. Uh, the reality is the day-to-day, the, the, -day, the moment you're in, the, um, the commitment to getting better really is most important. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that has to continue to be our focus. You know, our guys aren't, you know, they're not unaware. You know, they understand uh, everything and they understand it's senior day and all that goes in that. Um, and we know we're going to get a tremendous performance from Illinois. Not the, not only the fact that they're playing well, but but having uh, been one of uh, having beat them, we're one of a few teams that have beat them. So we're going to get a tremendous performance from them. We're going to have to play, uh, I believe, as well as we played all year. Um, and um, um, I think our guys are aware of that. But our focus really ha this week has been trying to get better. And then I know you absolutely hate these kind of questions, but but. You were named one of the finalists for the coach of the year. Do you have a do you have any sort of comment on that? I mean, looks like they did their voting before last week. Thanks. Okay, next up, Colin. Chris, how how would you define sort of where your confidence or concern level is, just in specifically the offense when you're when you're coming off last game? Say that again, Colin. I'm sorry. How would you define where your confidence or concern level is with where you are as an offensive team right now at the end of the season? Um, you know, I think when, you know, we, we're not probably as, as normally to be expected, we're not quite as confident maybe as what we've been. Um, we've got to do a good job as coaches to get back in a rhythm and, and to, to help them um, – see their opportunities and, and uh, you know, play with – I thought we were, in the Iowa game, just we were too careless, too sloppy um, uh, offensively, and the ball didn't move quite as well. And, uh, and then we missed, we missed some open shots too. But, um, uh, you know, I, and, and you got to give Iowa credit too for that. But uh, I, I think the Michigan State game, it was just hard to get much of anything going offensively. Um, so, you know, I'm interested to see how we respond. And then just looking specifically at Kofi, I know that I think after the first game, you had, you had mentioned just the need to, for him to see bodies and see arms and have guys flying at him. What are, what are the keys to, to limiting him when he's getting a, a second shot at you guys? Yeah, you know, he's so good at, um, at catching deep 
and catching and pivoting with uh, without the use of a dribble. Um, and he's so big um, that if you play behind him, he can turn and score. If you front him, he they can throw over the top. And they're – they are really disciplined in getting him the ball. He, he is a physical he's, – he's as much of a physical, you know, kind of specimen that I, I've – in terms of his, his uh, physicality, his, his, his body composition, in terms of he just – it looks like it's all muscle. Uh, I, he's as physical as anybody I've ever coached against. Um, and – he also plays in a physical way. Uh, so I think you just have to uh, be ready for the kind of battle that that's going to be night in, night out. Thanks. Okay, we'll go back to uh, Adam Jardy. Uh, Chris, a moment ago, you were saying you need to get back to emphasizing the importance of games and the day-to-day. -day. You said, I'm not sure I did as good a job of that in, in the last couple of weeks. Did, did you feel like you – took your eye off the ball a little bit as far as like the task right in front of you. I was a little confused by what you said. I think maybe, maybe I, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I just reflecting back this past week that, that we put too much emphasis on, you know, uh, I don't know. I just think it's, I, I think I, the, the element of every day coming in and improving and getting better and understanding you're playing in the best league in the country. Um, and that, that uh, you know, we, we wanted to talk big picture, but maybe in some ways there was too much conversation about big pictures is, was, was my thought. Uh, and if so, that was on me. Um, and with, uh, with this Illinois team, um, you know, we don't, I guess we don't really know if Iowa is going to play or not. And, you know, I think everyone assumes they're not as good without him and they go and do what they did at Michigan without him. Um, how do you prepare – without knowing if he's going to play against you and how are you guys health wise? Uh, you know, we're, we're um, health wise, we're, we're better. We're not, we're not uh, where you'd love to be, but most teams aren't at this point. Um, uh, I think most every team or a lot of teams and not, 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 I mean, there are some teams that have had very healthy seasons uh, that have had the fortune of that, but between, you know, a few guys, um, uh, just not feeling themselves, and obviously Kyle's still recovering. But I, I think our guys are are better than what they were, and that's the encouraging thing. Um, they're better physically than what they were, you know, a week ago. Okay, Steve Hellwagon. Yeah, Coach, uh, sure there's going to be some talk about uh, all Big Ten and different things Steve? like that. It looks like there's some pretty automatic first-team picks, maybe three or four of them. Where does your guy EJ Liddell fit into that? Looks like he'd be in that five, six, seven category if we were ranking guys in this league. What's your stump speech that, that say he deserves to be in the top five first team pick this year? I believe he's a first team all league performer and I believe he's earned that. I, I really do. Um, and I believe Dwayne has earned, um, um, you know, serious consideration um, obviously, we'd like to finish well and give ourselves a chance. Uh, but when you look at our schedule, who we played uh, in in the league uh, uh, twice, and and just our overall uh, schedule, I believe that uh, that that those guys. Um, I believe just what I said. I believe EJ is is deserving of that. I really do, and I believe Dwayne deserves serious uh, consideration and. And we've made that uh, evident in, in everything that we can do. Um, I think that um, both guys have improved tremendously, um, but they also need both need to play play better on both ends. And uh, they both understand that. Uh, for us mm -hmm. to be good, we need a lot out of them. But I'm a big believer in in both of those guys, and and uh, hopefully we can. You know, play well and, and give them, um, you know, I would love nothing more than give them the, the, the opportunity for that. But as you mentioned, Steve, when you have a league of this number of teams and this number of really, really good players, um, you know, I'm sure there are other coaches that could make uh, stump speeches or arguments just like I am. Yeah. Um, curious, uh, 
the Big Ten tournament moving to Indiana, is this going to be a situation where the Big Ten teams that are playing in the NCAA tournament go for the Big Ten tournament and stay there for the duration? What The travel really hasn't been discussed a whole lot. What, what do you know about the planning for what the next two, three weeks are going to look like in terms of going and coming back, that type thing? I think, um, listen, I, I think that um, – that's been the recommendation, Steve, is that those teams that are NCAA tournament teams, and what do we have, nine out of 14 or something <laughs> yeah. right now in the league. So those teams uh, would just stay there. I, I don't, I, I don't want to say right now that I'm firmly committed if you lose early uh, and we're a three-hour drive that we're definitely going to stay there. Uh, but that, I think that's been the recommendation from the Big Ten Um uh, I, I think we'll evaluate it on a day to day. Thanks. Okay, we'll go to Stephen Means. Bound at this point, and how your guys' schedule has worked out, and especially these last couple of weeks here. Do you guys kind of feel like you've already been playing NCAA tournament, Big Ten tournament level basketball? Not necessarily the quality, but just the level of these games and competition you guys have had to play. I, I hope so, Stephen. I hope so. I really hope that that helps you uh, as you get in. Now, the, the first round's a challenge. The second round's a challenge. You know, when we go to the Big Ten tournament, our first game's going to be a heck of a battle. Like, there's – so I think be, knowing that you come from a league where every game is such a challenge – Hopefully it does prepare us for what's coming next. That's what you really hope when you come out of a, a league this good and, and league this powerful. And, and I do think it, it will prepare our, our, our teams, um, you know, to, to, to be their best. But we've also got to perform. You know, that's, that's what we've got to do. But hopefully it, it helps us. Thanks. Okay, we'll wrap it up with Bruce Hooley. Chris, you've talked about roster composition, and uh, that I would think is going to be more challenging this upcoming offseason with guys like CJ, Kyle, who can come back, and that's everywhere. It's going to have people who can come back. Uh, can you discuss the challenges of that? Like, are you guys going to get extra? Is the NCAA going to allow you extra grants, or how do you manage that if you have guys coming in and you've assumed that you have guys leaving, but you may not have guys leaving? Well, CJ is definitely going to professionalize. Um, he's definitely going to professionalize. Kyle's the one that I think is, will wait probably a few weeks after the season to decide. Um, so there's, there's, there's one. Um, um, I haven't, you know, Moose has already also graduated, but he had a red shirt year. I, I think Bruce, the, the, uh, you know, that'll be something that I, I think every spring now as a college basketball coach, you know, you're going to have to, sit down and, and kind of just, and I, I know it's the same in, to, to some degree in college football as well. Um, but you're just going to have to sit and evaluate, um, you know, what kind of movements, whether it's professionalization or whatever, um, what, what kind of movement takes, takes place. So I think um, uh, we'll sit down and evaluate that, but we, 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 um, we kind of have a, you know, you have a general idea going into it and then you have those conversations after the season. I think, the NCAA uh, and the schools have made allowances to to allow those those guys to return if if say a Kyle wanted to return in terms of roster uh, positions and scholarships and all those things. An offshoot of that is this dramatic impact that we've seen over the last couple of years of and when you look at Michigan with uh, two guys in particular that they added via transfer and the immediate impact they can make. And how do you as a coach weigh that versus uh, like, how do you weigh leaving a spot open for somebody like that who you might get where you have a high school senior who you know you can get, but he's not gonna offer you the immediate impact of somebody that you might get. Yeah, I've heard that conversation. And, and uh, you know, what you hope that the transfer market doesn't do is eliminate a ton of opportunities for high school kids. Uh, because I've heard that now that you know, coaches feel so much pressure that they just go ahead and take a transfer and eliminate uh, the opportunity for, for maybe a high school kid. 
I, I do think they'll be they'll that will happen. Um, it already has in the last couple of years, but uh, I, I think for us, you you sit back, you evaluate, and keep in mind those are conversations that we've had now for a couple months as we look at potentially what the roster could be next year, and it's it's exciting for me to think about potentially what our roster could be uh, next year with who we could return and with with our incoming recruits, uh, but you know you got to also take stock of you know, what it, what it will eventually look like, even though there's some real excitement uh, for us on, on that. But I think at the end of the day, um, um, you know, it's just, it's a different, it's different than it was 10 years ago. And that's such a huge part of our job is, is uh, constantly taking stock of that and seeing what, what are the needs going to be uh, for teams right now. Uh, are you reasonably certain, hundred percent certain, close to hundred percent that Seth, wants to come back for another year? I'm pre- uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty certain on that. As long as he's healthy, I, I feel, feel very confident in that. Okay, thanks coach, appreciate it. Bye everybody. Thanks Dan. Thanks Dan.